Hey guys, so um, I realize it's pretty dark in here, but we'll just see if this works. So um, I just watched um, my friend Connor's uh, Handyman Bananas video, um, his newest video, I think, his newest video. I think it's called, um, I was going to check it on my phone, but <laughs> whatever. Um, I think it's called How I Feel About Myself. And um, first of all, if you have not already subscribed to Connor's channel, Handyman Bananas, go do that because it's my like my favorite he's awesome um and anyways this video is about um he had found an old picture of himself looked back at it and um you know it's from a darker point in his life and um he was really just talking about like being able to look back at those times um with compassion and something he said really resonated with me and my experience with um, this transformation that I've gone through in the last year and a half or two. Um, he said, you know, that he, he said, I truly believe that everything we do is to protect us, to protect, protect ourselves. And, um, and that just, that, that just feels so true to me. Um, and this is actually just perfectly prompted me into um, making this video that I've been wanting to make. So thank you, Connor. Um, there was this kind of big turning point um, for me in my journey with anorexia and um, and trying to climb my way out of that. When um, when I read a book called Eating the Light of the Moon. And um, I totally recommend it to anyone. I don't remember the author's name right now, but I could look that up and put it in the comments. Um, so most books that I've read about eating disorders are, I, they, just don't, they just don't do it for me. Like absolutely nothing in them feels right. <laughs> um, a lot of books about eating disorders aren't written by people who have actually experienced them, which you know, just sets them up for failure right away. Um, I've, you know, so I've read a couple other ones that had just, just didn't do it for me. And this one was the first one that I read that made any sense to me at all. Um, and surprisingly, this one actually was, was not written by someone who had dealt with any disorder either, um, which was really shocking because her, her insights just, I mean, I was in tears in, like, the introduction because it just really felt like she was actually speaking about something that I had experienced and something that I felt um, was real that, that no one else had um, really captured and put into words that I had read before. Um, so highly recommend that book. But one of the things that she talks about in that book that really changed my approach to trying to get to recovery was she she described um she basically said that we need to recognize those of us that are struggling with eating disorders or have struggled with eating disorders or continually do <laughs> that um we need to recognize how our eating disorders have served us in our past or in our present or whatever part of our lives um which is how I'm tying this into Connor's video. Our eating disorders, just like any other vice or addiction, are coping mechanisms. And for whatever reason, that's you know, that's the mechanism that our that our mind and body chose in that circumstance. And it's a survival um, method. We we numb ourselves or distract ourselves through different means, in our case, possibly starvation or just, um, you know, fixation on, on calories or what, what, whatever it may be, um, to try to escape something else that's in our lives that we simply do not have the capacity to, to cope with in any other way. Um, at that moment in time. And once you can recognize uh, that 
about your your disorder, your journey with with your self care. It becomes so much easier to um, to work with that part of you that that um, is fearful of, of feeling more to to be able to um, nurture it in such a way that you won't need that protection anymore. So um, I think that one of the things that this woman said in this book that the first thing that she said that really just struck me and, and had me crying was um, that she uh, she basically said that when she had been trained to to work with individuals with eating disorders, the the textbook um, kind of way of um, describing her future patients or the stereotypes that were being put on us, basically, um, was that eating disordered individuals were the most manipulative and self-centered and um, just all these awful things, basically. Um, to kind of like prepare her for like, these are the people you're going to be dealing with. And, but she said that that was the absolute opposite of true in her experience, that all of her patients were some of the most sensitive and empathetic and compassionate. Um, and she also mentioned other nice things. <laughs> we can just stroke ourselves in the back right now. Um, she said that they were also some of the most uh, creative or you know, insightful, uh, I guess emotionally intelligent would be like a good word for it, individuals that she had come into contact with and, and they were never selfish. Um, they were quite the opposite. And that really um, made sense to me. It made so like, oh, that's good, I'm these nice things. But I had always been a really, really, really sensitive person my whole life and um, and she was basically saying that you know this sensitivity leads to needing um, at some point in your life especially at the onset of adolescence when so many hormonal changes are also happening as well as um, you know just changes in your life uh, needing some sort of um, escape or or coping mechanism and and some individuals will turn to alcohol or drugs or promiscuity or you know whatever and then there are those of us that that turn to uh, food problems um, and numbing ourselves in through deprivation or any other means and um, She also had this metaphor for um, for learning how to let go of of that disorder, like learn, like recognizing first how it served you, so that you can, you know, you can acknowledge that and then let it go. And um, she described this analogy of of holding on to a log. You're you're going down this stream or this river with rapids and you're holding on to a log for dear life basically and to be able to swim to shore you you aren't strong enough to just to just let go of the log and swim to shore you have to swim laps around the log and then hold back on and then and then swim another lap and get stronger and then and then eventually you'll be strong enough to swim to shore and she was basically using that analogy um as an analogy for for relapsing basically and and taking small steps towards um towards ultimately being healthy again and ultimately being recovered um which also made a lot of sense to me because i had i had certainly experienced um many many relapses you know within my within my overall sickness um, and, you know, times when I was just doing so much worse, <laughs> you know, a couple of steps forward and a couple of steps back. And, um, 
but but with each of those with each of uh, those relapses or with each of those kind of waves in that that cycle, I I definitely learned so much, and each time I I felt like overall even if even if I got thinner than I ever had been overall mentally. Um, I was getting closer to, um, to recovery because I was learning so much about myself just through life, you know, and, um, but my main point here, (laughs) it's getting too long, is I guess we have this, you know, we kind of personify, um, eating disorders as, um, you know, these evil entities within us, which, which they are, I don't want to belittle that, but there's also a value in, um, in recognizing, you know, why we had to, um, we had to use that vice and, and on some level being grateful for, um, having had that survival mechanism at our disposal at the time. Um, because without it, I mean, who knows what, you know, what else would have happened, what, what worse thing may have occurred. Um, and kind of not seeing, I guess, maybe there, there's value in, in just being like, fuck Anna and like, you know, having this kind of like, there's like a hashtag on, on Instagram and stuff called ED warrior, like eating disorder warrior. And fuck Anna is one of the hashtags too. And there's value in that and having just kind of that empowering feeling of putting your foot down and taking control and rooting this nasty crap out of your life and your mind. Um, But I think that there's also value in having an understanding or compassion for the part of you that became Anna because... um, it's a broken part of you and it's a part of you that needs to be, um, nurtured to be able to, uh, to heal. So yeah, that's, I think that's long enough. Um, I hope you guys have been having a good weekend. Um, and I've been really busy, but I have so many, things that I want to say. So don't worry, I'll be making more videos. Okay. Good night.